Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 22nd, and it's a chilly but beautiful spring day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. So today what I wanted to do is do a part two of my uh, packing video that I did a, a few weeks ago. I'll link above and below to the previous version of this. But in that video I talked about packing um, ribbon. Basically, you know, most of what you're going to encounter as a pipe smoker is going to be roughly a, a ribbon cut blend. But I got some uh, questions about flakes and uh, uh, slices and things like that. So I thought eh, it's probably a good idea to do a, another video talking about some of those things. And as I started to think about it, I thought, you know, I probably should do something a bit more extensive that covers, I hate to say all the known types of tobacco, but at least all the known types that I can think of. And sort of, if you think about, if I think about the way I pack a pipe, I can kind of build a sort of story around all these different types of tobacco. And they all actually wind up funneling down to just two packing methods. And it's really simple if you think about it in this way. So I'm going to be cutting back and forth to, to the overhead shots as I talk about this. And you, hopefully you can see here that I've got a um, sort of simple diagram. Uh, I've sort of listed every type of tobacco cut that I can come up with. And what we talked about last time was over here, this, this ribbon cut tobacco. Now, it didn't get into shag just because I wasn't thinking about it at the time. I was just thinking about packing the average pipe tobacco. And the average pipe tobacco is, for the most part, going to be a ribbon cut. And I'll explain what I mean by that in, in just a minute. Shag is a little bit different. Shag is a ribbon cut that's very, very fine cut. Uh, similar to the kind of tobacco you might see in a cigarette. Uh, very, very thin strands, and I don't have any shag uh, to show you. But uh, it packs pretty much the way you would pack ribbon. Um, just you want to put a little bit more pressure on it. And the reason for that is since it's so fine, it'll burn very, very fast. So if you can get it packed down a bit tighter, you'll slow down that burn rate and have a cooler smoke. But for the most part, the three-step packing method, that uh, pack like a child, pack like a woman, pack like a man method, works for both uh, shag and ribbon cut. Now, I've got an example here of a mostly ribbon cut tobacco, and unfortunately I, I, didn't, I, could, I didn't have any pure ribbon uh, to show you. But this is um, Cornell and Deal Yorktown. And for the most part, this is a just a, a simple ribbon cut of Virginia tobaccos. And you can see there's some finer uh, and some, some thicker uh, pieces in there. And that's pretty standard. You know, you're not going to see everything being exactly the same. Also, you'll notice there's some small pieces in here. And this is all Virginia. There's no Perique or anything in this. And what that is, is sometimes the ribbons get cross-cut. So sometimes there's... Uh, Instead of getting long ribbons, you'll get these short, chopped up pieces. But for packing purposes, it packs exactly the same. Uh, so that that's uh, what we talked about last time, although I wasn't specifically calling it uh, out as, as ribbon cut tobacco. Now, in reality, what you're going to be smoking most of the time is a mix of, of different cuts. And to illustrate that, I've got some, just because I had it handy, uh, some... Bayou Morning here, and this is another Cornell and Deal blend. And what you can see here is you've got a mixture of stuff going on here. You've got some, some fine ribbon cut, uh, you've got some thicker ribbon cuts, you've got these little granulated pieces in here, and you might, uh, you can see some of these granulated chunks here. Um, I don't think this has any cube cut burly in it. Uh, so, so that's the, the granulated bits are, are going to be Perique. The more finer ribbon cut be, bits are going to be the Virginias. And uh, Bayou Morning is a Virginia Perique blend, so that's pretty much what you would expect. Now, most of your blends are going to be mixtures. You know, if you look at something like Haunted Bookshop, it's even got bits of flake in it. Um, we'll talk about flake in a minute. Now, the way you, you think about this is you're going to pack it like the dominant thing that's there. So if this was a pure granulated or cube cut, we'll talk about that in a minute, the packing method would be different. But since this is mostly ribbon, the three-step method works just fine, and uh, that's what I would suggest you, you work on, you work with, rather.
got a lot of tobacco lined up here and I'm trying to keep it from well at the end <laughs> at the end of this video I'm probably just gonna mix everything together and smoke it okay so that takes care of this this section here this this ribbon and shag cut and that's the packing method we talked about last week the other packing method that you need to know is what you would use for something that is either cube cut or granulated and there's really two um, primary examples of that that I can show you and I just want to make sure I've got these right. So this is cube cut burley. Uh, this is just a straight cube cut burley. And what you've got here, you know, if with ribbon cut you think about the, the leaves being um, sort of almost run through a paper shredder and sliced into, into bits. With cube cut, they're chopped. And you've got these rather three-dimensional cubes of, of tobacco. So these do not pack very well. These are hard. You, you can't push them down. You can't get them to compress. Uh, so you can't use the packing method that we talked about last time. You can't use the three-step method for this. You can try, but it, it won't, uh, won't do you much good. Another good example is this uh, stuff here, which is actually sugar barrel. And you can see sugar barrel is composed of, you know, there's some little bits of, of ribbon in there, but mostly it's, it's this granulated sort of chunky uh, stuff. I, I can't say for certain that it's burly, but it's, this is a mostly burly blend, so I'm, I'm guessing that the granulated stuff is a cube cut or some kind of coarse cut burly. So these sorts of tobaccos, and... Uh, you know, you will run into them uh, if you don't want to smoke straight your cube cut burley. Uh, something like, uh, I believe, Cornell and Deal Crooner is basically a cube cut burley with a deer tongue added. Those are the sorts of things that are going to require this pipe, this other packing method. And it's really simple. So I've got a um, simple Bari billiard pipe that I'm going to be smoking. And I've got a jar of cube cut burley. And all I'm going to do, and it, it's nice to have a wider mouth jar for this, but this will work just fine. I'm going to put the pipe in, scoop and shake, and I have enough tobacco in there to smoke. Now, what's, oh, I forgot that I can even show you here. <laughs> what's important about this is I did not fill it all the way, okay? I didn't press this down at all, and I did not fill it all the way. Those are the two rules of packing, uh, cube cut or granulated tobacco. Pour it in, scoop it in, get it in there somehow without any, you know, ramming of, of the tobacco. And don't put it all the way to the top. The reason you don't want to put it all the way to the top is that it expands when you light it. You know, under heat, the tobacco's got moisture inside of it and the moisture turns to steam and it expands. And what will inevitably happen if you're smoking cube cut burley and you fill the bowl to the top is that a hot ember, of, a hot little cube of burley is going to pop out and land on your shirt and it's going to make your wife angry. So don't smoke uh, cube cut burley or sugar barrel or anything like that with a bowl filled all the way to the top. You'll notice I did not pack this at all. You can if you want tamp it down a bit. It's not going to hurt anything, but, and certainly after you start smoking it, you can do your normal tamping routine, you know, light pressure. But there's no need to, um, to do any, you know, increasing amounts of pressure or anything like that on a cube cut or granulated blend. So if you've got the three-step method and you've got the scoop or gravity feed method mastered, you're done. You don't have to know anything else about packing a pipe. It's that simple. Well, what about all these other things? Okay, well, let's go through them and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean and you'll soon understand why I've got these arrows here. So let's start at the top with plugs or cakes. So a plug, that's a plug. Uh, this is a uh, salt dog, and I thought I had actually brought a cake with me. No, I'm afraid I didn't. 
So a cake would be something like uh, Cornell and Deal's Briar Fox. Uh, so the difference between these, and by the way, the nomenclature, people make up words all the time and don't necessarily use them the same way. So this is all the way I think about it. A plug is made of layers, and hopefully you can see some of those layers in there, of tobacco leaves. So the leaves are just layered on top of one another and then put under high pressure, uh, sometimes with some steam, and kept there for quite a while. And what results is a very dense, very hard brick of tobacco. Now, some people will cut this or break it along these lines, but I don't like to do that because it's not always well mixed. So if you do that, you might be getting different flavor profiles as you go through the, uh, the plug. What I like to do, and what I think most people do, is cut it across those layers, or through those layers. And if I do that, and I'll try to show you this, this, this particular uh, salt dog is, is a very hard plug, so it's a little bit hard for me to do this from <clears throat> this angle with the camera and everything, but what you need is a very sharp knife, and this is, a, this is my plug knife, and it, is, uh, it was made for me by a friend, and it is extremely sharp. And you want to just sort of judge how big you want this and just try to slice your way through as smoothly as you can. Like I said, this is hard and I'm not really at the best angle for, for doing this, but I think it's working out okay. So, there we go. So we cut a plug into these things. And what are we going to call these things? Well, these things are going to be flakes or slices, uh, one or the other. And the same is true if we had a cake here. Now a cake is going to be something like this that's pressed down, same process, but it's going to be more crumbly. It's going to be easier to like break off a corner and rub it out in your hand. So they're, they're fairly different. Plugs tend to be very hard and dense. Cakes tend to be a bit more brittle and easy to break. You can get both of them sliced though, and when you get them sliced they uh, behave very similarly. So this is essentially a flake tobacco now. So I went from a plug to a flake by cutting it. So we can get to this point here on this, uh, this figure. So, so plugs and cakes become flakes, broken flakes, or slices. And I've got an example here of a flake. This is actually a Gawith and Hargo, Gawith. Hang on, let me, let me double check this. <laughs> Galwith and Hogart uh, Cherry Cream Flake. And you can see it is basically, there was a large plug made from uh, leaves of tobacco laid on top of one another, and then this was sliced in this orientation. So here you've got all of the leaves running through the, the, the uh, flake. Now you can get broken flakes and those appeared like this, you know, you, you get these pieces that were clearly flakes at one point but uh, are no longer. <laughs> or you can get these nice uh, beautiful flakes that you often get from from Gawith and Hargith or uh, uh, Sam of Gawith. Um, or you can get something more akin to this, uh, this slice that we made from the salt dog. In all cases you've got a choice as to how you're going to smoke this. Now, there, there's all kinds of people that, that well, there are obviously there are all kinds of people. There's all kinds of ways to do this, and uh, some people will just like roll this up and stuff it in the pipe and light it. And that, that's great. If you enjoy doing it that way, there's no issue at all with it. Uh, but it's hard to keep it lit, and I don't really like to think about my pipe while I'm smoking it. Uh, I like to enjoy the flavors, but I don't like to you know think about how I'm going to keep it uh, lit all the time. So what you can do with this is uh, rub it out, which is what a lot of people will do. Now, I, my method of rubbing out is pretty simple. I just kind of compress everything down and squeeze it into a really tight ball. And then I will usually pop it into the pipe like this and let it expand. But what that's doing is it's, it's breaking down all those bits and bobs. And, you know, people will continue to rub this out more and more. And, you know, hopefully what you're starting to see is this is starting to look more and more 
like a flake. Uh, not, I'm sorry, more and more like a ribbon cut blend. Because what you're doing is you're taking those leaves that were full leaves, pressed, cut length, uh, cut through the body of the leaf. So you've got these strips, but they're stacked leaves. And now you're breaking that up. You're basically making a ribbon uh, cut. And this you can pack using that standard uh, three-step method. So anytime you've got a flake tobacco or a slice or a broken flake, you can rub it out like this and you will wind up with a mixture that is similar enough to a ribbon cut that you'll be able to pack it just fine using the three-step method. Now there's another possible way you can go with these that is fun and people like to do. And that is you can, instead of taking a chunk off like I did, just cut little pieces. And it's a bit more fussy, but we're in no hurry, right? We're pipe smokers. If we were in a hurry, we would not be pipe smokers. Okay, that'll be enough for demonstration. Put my flake away. Now we got these that will crunch up, and look what we got. We basically have a granulated or cubed cut tobacco. And this you can pack using the gravity feed method. And this will spoke just fine like that, and rubbing it out to produce something more like a ribbon will smoke just fine as well. Uh, you might get different flavors depending on what you decide to do, but uh, they both are perfectly reasonable ways to smoke a flake tobacco and will get you to the point where you're smoking it just as easily as you were smoking uh, a, a ribbon cut or a cube cut. So all of this stuff reduces down to one of those two packing methods once again. Uh, so you only need to know the three-step method or the gravity feed method. You can play with other methods for sure. Uh, picked up the wrong pipe. <laughs> you can play with other methods for sure. Uh, and, and it's fun to do that, but I'm just telling you that from my experience, I find that these are the two methods that I need. There's another whole world of, of tobacco down here that is really very interesting. So we'll start off with uh, ropes and twists. And we've got an example here of a rope tobacco. This is a rope tobacco called Green Odd Rope. Uh, it's a Virginia Perique that uh, is sold by a company called Sidnyenko which I believe is a Swedish company, but they source their tobacco from Samuel Goweth. So this is probably a repackaged Samuel Goweth product. It's a Virginia Perique uh, twist. And the way this is made is leaves of, of uh, tobacco are layered up on top of one another, and then they are twisted into a rope-like uh, product. And this will be uh, fermented in some way, or, or it's not pressed, it might be uh, somehow put under pressure so that it's uh, it maintains the shape and then it is cut into lengths and sold. Uh, this tobacco used to be used by very popular with sailors because they could just break off a piece and use it as chewing tobacco easy to transport. Um, another version of this is an example here of this Mozek strong tobacco which I, is I believe from the German company HU uh, this is more, it looks more like a cigar in cross-section. Uh, you can see the sort of bits of stem in there and, and then the leaves swirling around. So this is just made uh, more akin to, to um, a cigar where the leaves are just rolled up, but there's no twist put to them. But nevertheless, these are both very similar forms of tobacco. And the way that you smoke these is you, once again, get your plug knife out. And where did I put my little... Uh, index card so I don't cut through my picture. Um, and you just cut little slices. Hopefully my knife will be sharp enough to demonstrate what I'm trying to demonstrate here. And when you cut these slices you will get these and I, I can't cut them as thinly as they can be cut by factory machinery, but you're going to get these little round sections of tobacco, which are you know wrapped around 
and that's your uh, that's your cross section of a rope. To smoke this, I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the flake. I'm just going to rub it out, and you can see this very quickly goes into a ribbon like tobacco because again you've got the leaves wrapped around here running this way we've cut them this way and that is giving us basically ribbons of tobacco which we can then rub out and smoke so this will pack just fine using the uh, ribbon cut three-step method the other thing that we can do I'm gonna use this as an example uh, we can buy these as coins so this is a piece of uh, our flake of Peter Stokeby Luxury Bullseye Flake. Uh, these flakes, instead of being cut from a plug, are cut from a rope or a twist. And you can see the tobacco again wrapping around, and there's that Cavendish core that uh, Stokeby has. Now, this you could do the same thing with. Let me just move my green odd rope out of the way here. I'm never going to remember what all these tobaccos are when I go to put them away. So with this, we could just rub it out like we just did, right? We could we could just turn this into a into a flake, or if we want to be fancy, and I don't know anybody that's ever done this, but just for the sake of completeness or completeness of work, we could cut this like so. And we'll have to change the orientation a bit as we go through it, but. I think you get the idea. And we could treat this as a granulated or cube cut tobacco. Or, if we prefer, you can just rub this out. This is a bit dry and brittle because I've had it out all day. Uh, but again, you get more of that ribbon type effect. So, with ropes or twists, you can simply convert them into coins by slicing them and then you can either chop them into a cube cut granulated form or more often rub them out into a ribbon cut form. So I hope what you see here is that really the main point of this video is that you only need to know two ways to pack the tobacco. The three-step method and a gravity feed or scoop method. Everything else is about preparation of the tobacco for putting in the pipe and I just basically showed you how to prepare I think pretty much any tobacco that you'll ever find. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I do think that if you watch both this video and the previous one on packing, uh, you'll be off to a good start with uh, with pipe smoking. And I hope that uh, you enjoy it as much as I do. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the tobacco preparation. It's it's a great part of the, the hobby. Enjoy trying different types of tobacco. Uh, different formats of, of leaf, you know, have, having it, and, and get some whole leaf at some point, which is, you know, you just can cut that up into ribbons or cubes or whatever you want. Play with the tobacco, play with pipe smoking. It's there to be enjoyed. So guys, with that, I'm going to call this video to a close. I don't have a lot in the way of updates. Uh, just remind you that this coming Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we'll be doing a live stream with uh, a guest, and that guest is... Um, uh, Corvette Jim Pipe Smoker, Corvette Jim Piper, Corvette, link below. Uh, Corvette Jim is a, a guy who does a lot of pipe restoration, so, sells some great looking pipes for very reasonable prices, and a uh, good guy to, to just spend some time with. So I'm really looking forward to that interview. I hope you'll join me 8 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Beyond that, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of those close to you. Have a great week, and uh, I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye now.